ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುಗ್ಚದೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದ ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯದೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಆಪ್ಯಾಯಂತು ಮಂಗಾನಿ ವಾಣಶ್ಚಕ್ಷುಶ್ರೋತ್ರಮಸೋ ಬಲಮೇಂದ್ರಿಯಿ ಸರ್ವಾಣಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೋಪನಿಷದ ಮಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರಾಕುರಿಯಾಂ ಮಾ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರಾಕರೋದಿರಾಕರಣಮಸ್ತ್ವಿರಾಕರಣ ಮೇ ಅಸ್ತು ತದಾತ್ಮನಿ ನಿರತೆ ಯೌಪನಿಷತ್ಸು ಧರ್ಮಸ್ತೆ ಮಯಿ ಸಂತು ತೇ ಮಯಿ ಸಂತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇ ಮೂರ್ತಿಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೆ ವ್ಯೋಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಮೂರ್ತ ಓಮಿತ್ಯೇತಕ್ಷರ್ಮುದ್ಗೀತಮುಪಾಸ ಓಮಿತೆಸ್ಯುದ್ಗಾಯತೆ ತೋಪವ್ಯಾಖ್ಯಾನ ಯಾವದ್ವಿಕಾರ ತು ವಿಭಾಗ ಲೋಕವತ್ ಉಕ್ತ ಆಕಾಶಸ್ಯ ಉತ್ಪತ್ತೌ ಪೂರ್ವೋತ್ತರ ಕಾಲೋ ವಿಶೇಷ ಸಂಭಾವಿತ ಶಕ್ಯತೆ ವಡ್ರಿ ಏಕದೇಶಿಯಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆಕಾಶಸ್ಯ ಉತ್ಪತ್ತೌ ಇವ ಆಕಾಶ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಆಕಾಶ ಇಸ್ ಬೋನ್ ದೆನ್ ದೆರ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಸಮ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬೋನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬೋನ್ ಸೊ ದೆರ್ ಮಸ್ ಸಮ್ ವಿಶೇಷ some distinction must be there in the in the states before the creation and after creation just as when fire is created so before fire was created there was no heat or no light after fire is created there is heat and light so that's a distinction so this is the mark of what we call pragbhava or prior non existence that before the thing existed whatever its nature is whatever its peculiarities are they, they they did not exist and then they came into being similarly akash also its nature is to accommodate so then that ekadeshi said that can you say that there is no accommodation at any time because atoms and such things were always there which needed to accommodate therefore we cannot conceive of a situation that there was no accommodation means there was no space therefore space is not created <coughs> then says yuntada yuktam the argument is not proper 
येन वै विशेषण पृथ्वीव्यादिभ्य व्यतिच्छम नव स्वरूपत इदानपि अध्यवसीयते सो क्वेश्चन इज हाउ डू यू से दर इज स्पेस हाउ डू यू आइडेंटिफाई स्पेस यू डू आइडेंटिफाई स्पेस एज समथिंग डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अर्थ फ्रॉम वाटर फ्रॉम फायर यू डू आइडेंटिफाई रेकग्नाइज स्पेस एज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दैम इज इट नॉट सो यस सो वॉट डिस्टिंग विच इज स्पेस फ्रॉम अदर थिंग्स that space possesses the quality of sound which other elements do not possess and that's how even today also the reason why we are able to recognize space is because space has some distinguishing characteristics namely sound which is what distinguishes space from other elements even today so whatever distinguishing element is because of which we recognize space as an individual entity different from other entities that that did not exist that's all we can say so that is it is so the then question was is it not that when the space is not then no akasha bhave kathinyam syadati will it not be that if there is no space then everything will be merged into everything else and it will all become a lump so the answer was given ni akasha bhava tad dharma va kathinyam it is not that the nature of space is kathinyam or solidity or but then or absence of space also is not solidity solidity is the nature of the solid substances and so whether akasha is there or not the kathinyam is not affected <coughs> then also akasha shariram brahma the shuddhi says akasha is shariram is the body of brahma is the nature of brahma therefore agni aushnevad brahma swavasya akashasya sati brahmani katham abhavah how can you say that brahman is there and akasha is not there if fire is the aushnyam the heat is the nature of fire so if fire is there heat must be there similarly if akasha is the nature of brahma then brahman is there akasha must be there how do you say that akasha is created from brahman meaning that before creation of akasha brahman was and akasha was not how can it be because akasha is a very shariram very nature of brahma <coughs> so vashyakara said यथा च ब्रह्म न स्थूलादिभ पृथ्वीव्यादि स्वभाव स्वभावत दिस इज ब्रह्म डजेंट ऑफ द स्वभाव द नेचर ऑफ पृथ्वी नेमली ग्रॉसनेस डजेंट ऑफ द स्वभाव ऑफ अणुनेस सटलिटी सो जस्ट एज डजेंट ऑफ स्वभाव ऑफ फायर हीट डजेंट ऑफ स्वभाव वाटर फ्लूडिटी सो जस्ट एज ब्रह्म डज नॉट हैव द नेचर ऑफ पृथ्वी एक्सेट्रा ऑल अदर एलिमेंट सो ऑल्सो एवं आकाशस्वभा न स्वभाव अनाकाशम श्रुते श्रुति से अनाकाशम ब्रह्म इज नॉट स्पेस मीनिंग दैट स्पेस इज नॉट द नेचर ऑफ ब्रह्म इवन दो एल्स व श्रुति से आकाश शरीर ब्रह्म सो ब्रह्म इज शरीर नेचर ऑफ आकाश इज नॉट टू बी टेकन लिटरल सेंस बिकॉज एल्स वट इज सेड अनाकाशम ब्रह्म ब्रह्म इज स्पेसलेस एंड सो I come so, so therefore just as prithvi etc is not the nature of brahman so also akasha is not the nature of brahman ever akasha shariram brahma is not to be interpreted as the swarupa of brahma <coughs> it is just that just as akasha is all pervasive abundant so also brahman is abundant or all pervasive that is what is meant that <coughs> tasmat prag utpatte he anakasham iti sthitam therefore before the creation there was no akasha <coughs> or brahman is devoid of of space <coughs> then yad vyuktam prasivyadi vai dharmyat akashasya ajatvam iti so prasivi we know 
possesses thula, tum or grossness and prithvi is created. Prithvi is born and prithvi is perishable, water is perishable, they are all born. Fire, water, earth are born. So, Akasha is distinct from them. Prithivyadi Vaidharmyad. Because fire is born, because fire possesses heat. Water is born because water possesses taste. Earth is born because earth possesses fragrance or smell. Then Akasha doesn't have any of this. Meaning that for something to be created, it must possess either heat or taste or smell. And Akasha does not possess any of these characteristics. Therefore, Akasha is not born. This kind of anumanam which contradicts what the Shruti says cannot be accepted as, as valid. Putpati anumanasya dashitvat. We already presented anumanam inference which establishes that Akasha is created. <coughs> so Akasha vikaraha vivaktatvat ghatadivat. The anumanam proves the that Akasha is created. <coughs> so we have Anumanam which f- is favored by the Shruti. And you have the Anumanam that in fact contradicts what the Shruti says. Therefore, that Anumanam cannot be accepted as Pramanam. <coughs> it is fallacious. Further, Anityam Akasham Anitya Gunashayatva Ghatā Divaditya-ri Prayoga Sambhavacca Further inference also can be presented here, they call it syllogism. Anityam Akasham, Akasha is impermanent because Anitya Gunashayatva Asha Lokasabdi Guna such as Shabda which is impermanent. Therefore, Akasha which is Lokas also is impermanent. <coughs> the Atmani Anayikanti Kattvamiti but then the same Anumanam also will prove that Atma is perishable because Atma also is possessed of Icha, Dvesha, Sukha, Dukha, this kind of attributes and they are impermanent. Therefore, Akash, this Atma being locus of his impermanent gunas also becomes impermanent. Sajna Tasya Upanishadam Prati Anitya Guna Shetva Siddhe says, no, no. Upanishad says, Kevalo Nirgunascha. Upanishad says that Atma is Nirguna, Atma is devoid of all attributes. And therefore, your claim that Atma is possessed of the attributes of Icha, Dvesha is not right. We cannot accept Atma as possessed of this Dharma or attributes. Vrutvadhyanam <coughs> chakasasya utpattivadhyanam prati asiddhatva That Akasha is Vibhu, is all pervasive. That also the, the followers of Upanishad who accept that Akasha is created cannot accept the avibhutvam, the all pervasive of Akasha or imperishable of Akasha. Vibhutvam also is only in a relative sense, not in the absolute sense. <coughs> Yathoktam etas shabda chayri. That was the other sutra, you know. So, because we shabda. <coughs> Where these statements are all called Shabdacha, Vayuscha, Antariksham, Chaitat, Amrutam. So to say that Vayu, and remember Vayu also is there. Vayuscha, Antariksham, Chaitat, Amrutam. This Vayu and this space are immortal. So Shabdacha, Tatra, Amrutatva, Shruti, Hitavad, Vyati, Amrutaha, Divoka, Sahitivad, Dashtavya. Even though the Shruti says that Akasha is Amrutam immortal, but that should be interpreted in a secondary sense, just as it is said that Devatas are immortal, but they are not immortal in primary sense. Similarly, also Akasha is not immortal in primary sense, only in a secondary sense it is to be understood as immortal. Utpatti prayoho upapari tattvat. Akasha is not immortal because Putpati, we have said here that Akasha is created. How can it be immortal? Pralaya also is there. 
That being the case, Akasha cannot be immortal in primary sense. <coughs> Akashavat Sarvagatascha Nitya Idiyapi. How about this? Akashavat Sarvagatascha Nitya Shabdacha. Like Akasha, like space, Atma is Sarvagataha, all pervasive, Nitya, eternal. So, like space, that is, space must be all pervasive, space must be eternal, then alone Atma can be all pervasive and eternal. <coughs> Idiyapi. Prasiddha Mahatvena Akashena Upamanam Kriyate. This is merely giving an illustration of Akasha, which is well known to be all pervasive, and therefore the all pervasiveness of space is presented as an illustration. For the relative all pervasiveness of space is presented as an illustration for absolute or unsurpassable in all pervasiveness of Atma. Atma. <coughs> Yatha Ishuriyo Savita Dhavati Idikshi Pragaditvaya Uchyade. Just as Savita Dhavati, the sun runs, moves fast like an arrow. It is not the sun moves as fast as an arrow, but then that fastness of arrow is in fact presented as an illustration. To, to convey the speed of sun. <coughs> now on the page 511, continuing. Sri Ratna Pandanu Sayatha Anantoyam Akashah Evam Anantha Atmayati Shrutihi Nitya Tveneva Samyam Brute Sesa anantoyam akasha. I am akasha ananta. Just as this akasha space is ananta, is infinite. Evam ananta atma in a manner similar to that, atma also is infinite. All the shabdach, all of these statements were in that sutra. <coughs> it is shruti. This statement that just as space is infinite, so also Atma is infinite, that very clearly says that space and Atma are equal. <coughs> just as space is infinite, so Atma also is infinite, therefore Nitya Tveneva Samyam, both of them are infinite and so infinity of Atma and infinity of space are similar. So just as space is infinite, so also is Atma infinite. That means infiniteness of the space and Atma is the same. So there is Samyam, similarity between Atma and space. <coughs> no idea, to that Vashyakara says no. Vashyakara says, Ete na idi. Ete na anantatva upamana shrutihi vyakshata so by saying that the immortality of space is relative and so also the all pervasiveness vibhutvam the all pervasiveness of space also is relative similarly also anantatvam the infinity of the space also is relative and not absolute <coughs> Sri Dhritna Bhava Akashasya Karyatvena Anityatvadityata Because it is already established that Akasha is created and what is created is impermanent. The impermanent cannot be infinite. <coughs> Shrutistu Apekshika Anantyadvara Mukhya Anantyam Bodhanetiti Bhava Shruti just presents Akasha as an illustration to give us an idea of what is meant by all pervasiveness, what is meant by infinite, to give an idea. It is not that Akasha, otherwise Akasha becomes Brahman, you know. If illustration and illustrated are the same in every, every aspect, then the illustration is not there, it, it is the same thing. So Akasha is presented as, as an illustration. And it's natural that 
Aka, we are familiar with Akash. So everybody, everybody knows Akash is all pervasive. People know Akash is infinite. So people know Akash is partless. So we understand what is partlessness, what is all pervasiveness, what is infinity. And so these are presented as the illustrations to illustrate the unsurpassable or absolute infinity. Atma is unsurpassably pervasive, all pervasive. Atma is unsurpassably infinite. Atma is ins- uns- unsurpassably immortal. So immortal is the space, the all pervasion of the space, the infinite of the space are all presented as just drishtanta, as illustration to illustrate the absolute infinity, immortality, all pervasion of Atma. <coughs> between Akasha and Atma cannot be in the primary sense that both are equally imperva- all pervasive cannot be because Akasha is clearly inferior to Atma or less than Atma. So Jayan Rashagana says Jayan Akasha Ityadi Shruti Bhyascha Brahmana Akashasya Una Parimana Pasiddhi Jayan Akasha <coughs> Akasha Jayan It is greater than Akasha Bigger than Akasha Bigger than space Brahman is bigger than space Very clear statement is there इति इत्यादि शुद्धिभ्यस्य ब्रह्मणः आकाशस्य ऊन परिमाणत्व परिमाणमिन्स मेजर ऊन परिमाणत्व स्मॉलर इन मेजर सो व्हेन उपनिषद सेज आत्मा इज ग्रेटर देन आकाश इट इज वेरी क्लियर दैट आकाश प्रोसेसेस एन इनफीरियर मेजर आका इनफीरियर टू आत्मा इन मेजर एंड देयरफॉर आल्सो द कंपैरिजन कैन नॉट बी in the primary sense. <coughs> Further also Vashyakaya says, Natasya Pratima Asti Eti Cha Brahmana Anupamanattam Darshayati No, that's it, Pratima has to be. Pratima means Supama. There's no comparison. There's nothing equal to Atma. It's a very clear statement. No, that's it, Pratima has to be. It is Brahmana, Anubhmanatam, Darshayati. That Brahman is incomparable. There's no Pratima. There's no illustration for Brahman. Meaning that Brahman is Anubhmanam. Brahman is incomparable. So incomparability of Brahman is very clearly expressed in the statement Natasya Pratimasti. <coughs> Say Ratna Prabha Mukhya Upamana Asatve Shruti Natasya Mukhya Upamana Asatve That the comparison is not in the primary sense is very clear in the statement Natasya Pratimasti There is nothing comparable to Brahman or Atma. <coughs> Suratnama says, Tasmar Akashasya Upamanatma Matrana Nityatma Nasti Nibhava. Therefore, just because Akasha is presented as Upamanam, as a comparison, as illustration, that does not prove that Akasha is Nityam or eternal. <coughs> Ah, 
अनित्यत्वेन असत्वे श्रुतिम आह अनित्यत्वेन असत्व आकाश इज अनित्यम इट इज इम्पर्मनेंट एंड देवर असत्यम इट इज इन असत्य मीन्स पैरिशेबल और मिथ्या बहुत वेज आकाश इज अनित्यम एंड देवर इज अनित्यम मीन्स इम्पर्मनेंट देवर इज पैरिशेबल This is also what Shruti says, Atahaiti, so Vashyakana says, Atavanyadhartam Itiche Brahmana Anyeshan Akashadinam Ardhattvam Darshadi Atavanyadhartam says Agnivalkya Everything other than Brahman is Artham. Artham is Mithya. Call it perishable. Call it Mithya or unreal. <coughs> it is Brahman, Anyeshan, Akasadhyanam, Artham, Dasyadi. Everything other than Brahman is Artham. It is perishable. And Akasha is different from Brahman. Therefore, Akasha also is perishable. Anyeshan, Akasha, everything bleeding from Akasha is, is perishable or is mithya is very clearly stated in that statement there. <coughs> then, Yattu, Ekasya, Eva, Sambhuta, Shandasya, Gaunatam, Mukhyatam, Jayati. So, this was stated. In the Sutra number 5, Syat Chekasya Brahma Shabdavata on the page 502, the Ekadeshi had made this argument, Syat Chekasya Brahma Shabdavata. Ekasya Sambhuta Shabdasya Vishay Vishesha Vashat Gauna Mukshasya Prabhuga Brahma Shaddavata. So this Aitri Upanishad says, Tasmadva Etasmad Atmana Akasha Sambhuta. From Atma, Akasha was born. Then Akasha Dvayu. From Akasha, Vayu was born. Vayu Agni. From Vayu, Agni was born. Now, if you take the Chandogya Shruti, Tat Teja Asujata, Tat Apa Asujata, etc., then the creation of fire, water, and earth is taken in the primary sense from the Chandogya Upanishad. Therefore, when you go back to Taitya Upanishad, by the admission of this Ekadeshi also, you have to accept that Vayo Agni, Agni Apa Adhyas Tusiri. From Vayu, the Agni, from Agni, the water, from water, the earth. That Bhavatso Sambhuta hai. Vayu ho Agni Sambhuta hai. Agni he Apa Sambhuta hai, etc. So, the, that Sambhuta word has to be accepted in primary sense. When is when you say, Atmana Akasha Sambhuta hai. That Sambhuta is not real, is in a secondary sense. So, in five times the word Sambhuta is used, two times we take in the Gauna sense, and three times we take in the Mukhya sense, primary. How can it be? So, then we give the example Brahma Shabdavata. It is a Ekasyabi Brahma Shabdasya Tatasa Brahma Vijigna Saswa. How one very same word Brahman? is used both in a primary as well as in secondary sense in the same passage tapasa brahma vijignasa sva may you know may you seek to know brahman through tapas where tapas is presented as the means of knowledge of brahman tapo brahma this is tapas itself is brahman so how can tapas be both means of knowledge of brahman and brahman also Therefore, tapo brahmeti, the word tapas is used in a secondary sense. So, how in the same passage, one word brahma is used in a primary sense as well as in secondary sense, 
so also in one passage the word sambhuta is used in primary sense when it comes to fire water and earth secondary sense when it comes to space and air <coughs> this is the argument going back to page 511 says ratnavara yattu ekasyeva sambhuta shabdasya gaunatvam mukhyatvam jayati when word sambhuta is gauna with reference to akasha mukhya with reference to fire iti tann that is not so akashe bi tasya mukhyata sambhava you that word sambhuta can possibly very well be primary with reference to akasha also you say that it is secondary but it can very well be primary also with reference to akasha how masaka tapasi iti tapasi brahma shabdavata akashasya janma shrute gamatvam ittetata akash sambhava shruti anumana bhyam parihritam which talks about the sambhava the birth or creation of akasha ne anumanya anumanam se presente akasha vikara vivaktatva ghata divat so anumanam also is there shruti also is there anumanam also is there in case of tap in case of this tapo brahme there is no the anumanam etc you know and so says the nine in it yuktam tapasi brahma shabdasya gaunatva then the word brahman is used in a gauna or a figurative sense secondary sense with reference to tapas is quite proper tasya brahma jnana sadhanatva because that very same passage says that tapas is the brahma jnana sadhanam the means of knowledge of brahman so tapasa brahma vijignyasasva so we you seek to know brahman through tapas tapas is third case that means tapas is presented as a means of knowledge of brahman and then right away it says brahman uh, tapas is brahman so that is similar to extol tapas to praise or extol tapas which is means of knowledge of brahman it is said that is very clear that tapas is a means of knowledge of brahman therefore when it says tapo brahman it is very clear that word brahman is used in the secondary sense with reference to tapas akashe tu sambhuta shabdasya jvalana divada badak abhavat so in case of tapas there is a badaka tapo brahman it that that word brahman is not in primary sense there is a badaka this is something that contradicts that by saying tapasa brahma vijignasa swa it is a tapasa so may you know brahman through tapas that statement is a like badaka it negates the idea of tapas being brahman but akasha sambhuta hai akasha is born this is no badaka this nothing that says akasha is not born here something says tapas is not brahman because it says tapasa brahma vijignasa swa that tapas is a means of knowledge of brahman very clearly say that tapas is not brahman but akasha is sambhuta akasha is born 
There's nothing that says Akash is not born. There's no bhadaka. There's nothing that contradicts or negates that statement. That Agni, the Teja Asvijata is very clearly there. So similarly, all Jvalana Divat, you can put it another way also, that fire is hot. However, in presence of a certain jewel, you know what is it? Surya Kant money, I think. In, in presence of that money, the heat of the fire is obstructed. So fire will not burn. Even though you can see the flame, fire cannot burn. That is Bhātaka. Something that negates the jvalanam or burning capacity of fire. And therefore, here, however, there is nothing, nothing that negates the creation of space. Now, so this statement is there. Anugrahaka sadbhavacca. And this Anugrahakam, this Anumanam also, which supports that statement of Shruti of creation of space. Therefore, Mukhyatvam. Sambhuta Shabdasya, Mukhyatvam. Therefore, where Sambhuta is Mukhya and not Gauna. So, unless normally, whenever a word is used, we should take it in a primary sense, unless there is reason otherwise. Then the Vibhutvam, Anandatvam, Amrutatvam, Amrutatvam, Immortality, Anandatvam, Infiniteness, Vibhutvam, All Pervasiveness, all of those things in case of Akasha are contradicted by other things, by other statements, by other logic. Therefore, those words are interpreted in secondary sense. Similarly, tapo brahmeti, tapas is brahma, the statement is now contradicted by tapasa brahma vijignyasasva, you know, seek to know brahman through tapas. Therefore, very clear that word brahman is used in a secondary sense in case of tapas. But word sambhuta was born in the akasha is not in any way contradicted. Not only that, but this animanam inference which supports that. Therefore, in case of Akasha, the word Sammuta is in a primary sense, not secondary sense. <coughs> Therefore, say so now finally, Ritnava. <coughs> This whole discussion is running on this contention that the Ekadeshi says the Chandogya Shruti is primary and the Taitriya Shruti should be interpreted according to Chandogya. And the argument of the Siddhanta is that Taitriya Shruti is primary and Chandogya should be interpreted in accordance. So by all of these arguments, it is established that the Taitriya Shruti is primary. <coughs> so Balavat Titri Shrutya, in what sense it is primary? That Akasha is born. And what the Taitri opening that says, Akasha Sambhutaha is primarily there. So therefore, even though Chandogya does not mention the creation of Akasha and Vayu, we should include them along with the in, in keeping with the statement of the Taitri Upanishad. So Balavat Tittari Shrutya Chandogya Shrutya Nayana. This Chandogya Shruti must be interpreted in accordance with the Taitri Shruti. In that case, both of them convey the same purport. Both the statements convey Ekavakyada means same purport. So, similarity of oneness of purport is there, unity of purport is there. Srashtari, Brahma, Atmani, Samanvaya. Therefore, Brahma or Atma is Brahma or Atma is Srashta, is creator, according to both the statements. So, Samanvaya. 
there is no the whole argument was there is internal contradiction Taitriya Shruti says one thing Chandogya says another thing and if both of them are right then they contradict each other therefore they are not Praman of the Puru Paksha there is no Brahmatmani Samanvaya both of them convey the same thing and therefore Samanvaya there is reconciliation with reference Brahma or Atma which is Shrashta or Creator or if you read the last sentence in Jnaya Nirana Akasha Shrishti Shruti Anusarana Tejas Shruti Shruti Nayana same thing they are interpreting the creation of Tejas in keeping the creation of Akasha Ek Vakya Daya Pramanyu Patte therefore they have unity of purport and therefore both of them are Pramanyam Akasha Kaane Brahmani Samanvaya Siddhati okay same thing so that's the Upasamhavati this is the conclusion in the whole Adhikarana. What see? See, the, content, the, the topic is simple whether Akash is created or not. But understand that in the process of conveying that so many statements of Shruti from so many places also are taken and explained to us where the meaning is primary, how to interpret those statements also, all of these also is included in the discussion. And that way Samanvaya, the whole idea of Brahma Sutra and the Bhasha is to explain to us the reconciliation, ek vakyata, the unity of purport of all the statements. And because statements are made in different places by different gurus or teachers, and therefore everybody has their own way of expressing. So the words may not be consistent. Even though the idea is consistent, the purport is consistent, but the manner in which that purport is expressed may not be consistent. Therefore, to an uninitiated person, it may look like these Shruti statements are just going in all directions. There is no consistency in them. So one of the important purposes of Brahma Sutra is to show consistency. Ek Vakyata, unity of purport. <coughs> So that way this Adhikarana is complete. Now we go to the next one, page 510. So Vyad Utpatti Muttva, Pavan Utpatti Ati Deshene Sadhayati. Vyad Utpatti Muttva, having established that space is created in the previous Adhikarana, previous topic. Pavanotpati, now this Adhikaranam consisting of one sutra alone says that air also is created. Ati Deshana, by extension, extending the same reasoning. So the reasons why it is proven that space is created, but the same reasoning also, it is proven that the air also is created. So no new reasoning is required. It's called Ati Desha, extension. <coughs> This will extend the graph. So when we graph up to 2012, up is this, so we can project what will be the situation in the subsequent years extension. Applying the same reasoning. <coughs> so the next sutra says, Etena Matarishwa Yakshataha Vyad Vyakhyanena Akasha said Utpatti Matta Vyakhyanena Etena So by this Vyakhyanam by this explanation of the creation of space also Matarishwa Vyakhyata Matarishwa means Vayuhu Matarishwa means Air Matarishwati Gachadidi Matarishwa One who moves in Mother Akasha is the mother of Vayu and Vayu always moves in Akasha, so it's called Matarishwa. <coughs> Matarishwa Vyakhyata hai, Akasha Avachinna Brahma Janyatvena Vyakhyata hai. That Matarishwa, Vayu also is created from Akasha. 
but not from akasha from brahman idea is that just as space is created from brahman so also akasha is created from brahman so brahman which is now attain the state of akasha from that the vayu is created so all along it is brahman so just as when you talk about an ornament of gold so from a lump of gold you say that a rod is created and then wire is created so from lump of gold the rod is created from that the wire is created from that the rings are created but all along it is gold so gold in the form of rod from that the gold the form of wire is created from the gold which is wire the rings are created from gold which is rings the chain is created etc <coughs> the we have this vyasika uh, nyayamala here those two verses as you know this is this is the style here that for every adhikaran for every topic vidyaranya swami has given these two verses for every topic to explain the central theme of the topic here of course the topic concerns only one sutra but still the same method is followed so says vayar nityo jayate va chandogye janma kirtanat saishana stamita devata iti uktesya na jayate vayu nitya is vayu now nitya eternal jaya deva or vayu also is born so this is the doubt whether so vayu is the vishaya what is samshaya jayate nava is the vayu born or not then puru paksha chandogye ajanma kirtana because chandogye only says tat teja hai asru jata hai does not talk about the creation of space and vayu so vayu is not born sa esha anastamita devata so vayu is a devata which never sets astamaya udaya means rising of the sun astamaya setting of the sun sa esha anastamita devata this devata vayu never sets never ceases to be there is always there meaning is permanent it uktesya na jayate for the two reasons the puru pakshi says why ho na jayate why is not born then the answer is given shutyantaro basamharat gauni anastame shruti hi shutyantaro basamharat that when you take into account the taitriya shruti then you should include what the taitriya says even though everything may not be said everywhere the idea is that everything is not said everywhere so what is said in one place should be included elsewhere also <coughs> so when you give the list of puja you know then some day you already said that you must have the panchapatra you know this every time you may not mention it is understood that this thing so you didn't talk you didn't mention it but then in puja it must be there so we do you told you earlier and also an asana must be there this must be there is all understood understood means what even though not clearly stated things are understood to be there for a puja to be performed for yaga to be performed <coughs> gauni anasthamaya shrutihi that eta anasthaisha anasthamita devata that the vayu devata does not set he is only gauni he is not mukhya but in secondary sense vya jayate vayu swarupam brahma karan so vayu jayate <coughs> and from what from brahman which is swarupam or karanam from brahma which is karanam vayu of the air is born <coughs> here the tika says taitriya keva akasha dvayu ti shruyate in taitriya upanishad it says akasha dvayu from akasha vayu was born sayam utpatti shruti gavane purupakshi says that the utpatti of the creation of vayu 
to be taken only in a secondary sense, not in the primary sense. Why? Chandogya srishti prakarane tejo gunnana eva utpatte abhidhana. So why will you say that even though Taitriya says Vaya was born, you should not take it literally. Why? Because in Chandogya there is no mention of creation of Vaya. Tejo banna, tejo banna naam, only teja hai, up and an, only three elements are shown to be created, fire, water and earth, and air and space are not mentioned, therefore air also is not created. <coughs> no, no, kvachit ashramam anyatrasutam na vayata utsahade. So suppose it is not stated in one place. But elsewhere it is very clearly stated. So just because it is not mentioned in one place, should not dismiss what is clearly stated elsewhere. Nanu kvachit ashradam anyat ashradam na varayatam utsahate. So now question is, whether we should include the creation of space and air in Chandogya, in keeping with the Taitriya Shruti, or we should exclude the creation of space and air in Taitriya in keeping with Chantogya Shruti. So this is how these two Shrutis are creating this whole discussion. <coughs> so he says that because Chantogya does not mention, therefore even though Taitriya mentions it, you should take it in a second sense. We say that wait a minute, Taitriya clearly says that Akasha has created, why was created, and just because Chandogya does not say, does not mean that what Taitriya says is not right. No, vayatam, bhaditam, utsahate, it cannot negate what Taitriya says. Iti nyayane, Taitriya shudeh, kuto gaunatam iti. So we ask him, on what basis do you say that the Taitriya shudeh is gaunin, is to be taken in secondary sense, why? Says Shrutyantara Virodhati Dhumahana. So Puru Pakshi says Shrutyantara Virodhati because creation of Vayu will contradict what the Shruti says elsewhere. Udhanyake Saesha Anastamita Devata Yad Vayu Iti. Saesha Devata Yad Vayu. This Devata who is called Vayu is Anastamita. It never says. The sun sets, but why the universe sets, you know? So fire also is put down, sun also sets, everything sets. But why it goes on round the clock? So why the universe sets? So that's what they, Brother Dhanik also said. The Vayoho Vinasat Pratishedhat. And thus, the Vinasat Pratishedhat. That statement clearly denies the vinasa, the destruction of Vayu, by saying that Vayu ever is. Utpatti matveja tadayoga. If Vayu was created, it would perish also. But this really says Vayu does not perish, means that Vayu is not created. So this is in support. So now Chandogya does not mention the creation of Vayu. And this Shruti says that Vayu is immortal and Deva is not created. So therefore, Taitriya Shruti must be interpreted in a secondary sense. <coughs> Iti prate brumaha. So when that situation arises, Siddhanti says here, Chandogya janma ashravane bi gunopa samhara nyayana Taitriya vakyasya itaratra upasamhara sati. Chandogya janma ashravane bi. Even though Shruti does not mention the Janma or the creation of air in Chandogya. Itaratra upasamhare sati. But since Taitriya mentioned that, therefore, the rule is to include what is not stated in one place, so we should include what is stated clearly in a place where it is not clearly stated. So, Shruta Meva Chandogya, by, so by the rule of inclusiveness, we assume that Chandogya also means, although Chandogya may have some reason why this is not stated. 
So sometimes you choose to make a statement in a different way because there is a different purpose. Because what you, what tangible elements are, only by water, I mean fire, fire, water and earth, <coughs> space is not a tangible element, air also is not a tangible element. Satcha, asatcha. Sat means gross, asat means subtle. So then fire, water, earth are called sat or gross. Other two elements are subtle. Therefore, it's easier to demonstrate. The purpose of Chandogya Upanishad is to demonstrate how the whole universe is nothing but Brahman or Sat. So Sat alone becomes fire, Sat alone becomes water, Sat alone becomes earth, and the fire water alone has become the whole universe. Therefore, the universe is Sat as its Atma. That's the whole idea. So it becomes easy because fire is its color which is red, Water has a color which is white, earth has a color which is black, and so it is easy to show how the whole universe is made up of these three colors. <coughs> Why doesn't have a color, air doesn't, space doesn't have a color, so you can't demonstrate. So therefore, this must be the reason why Sandhagya chooses to mention only three elements. Doesn't mean that they mean that only three elements are created. <coughs> So Shruta Meva, Chandogi, Vayu Yanma. So Chandogi may have its own purpose. In not mentioning those two elements, that does not mean that the two elements are not really created. So we must assume that Chandogi also means that Vayu is created. <coughs> Anastamaya Shruti Stu Namukhya. Where this Shruti, Saesha, Anastamita Devata, this Devata never suffers from extinction. That Shruti is Namukya, that non-extinction or immortality is not in primary sense. Upasana, Prakarana, Patitattvena, Stuttyarthattva. So you are quoting the statement of Upasana. In Upasana meditation, you always pray or extol the object of meditation. So why is the object of meditation? The why is extolled? Why is praised as immortal? So don't take it, it's Arthavada, not taken to be taken in the primary sense. Akashotpati hetavasya atranam sandeya. And whatever hetus or the reasons we presented for the creation of Akasha. Akasha, Vikara, Vivaktatvat, Ghatadivat. Anityam, Akasham. Anitya, Guna, Shreya, etc. So, so many Hetus we gave for creation of Akasha. All those also apply to Vayu. Atharam Sandhya. So, those Hetus are reasons or arguments also must be taken into account here, must be applied here also. Nache, Vayu, Akasha, Karya, Pena, Brahmani, Anandra, Bhava. Another question is raised. The Upanishad says that by knowing Brahman, then everything is known. Now, Chandogya clearly says, Tat Teja Asuryata, that Brahman created fire, Tat Apa Asuryata, Brahman created water, Tat Annam Asuryata, Brahman created earth. But Taitya doesn't say Brahman created life, it's Akasha Dvayu. And Vayu Agni. So if Vayu is created from Akasha, then why is not Brahman? So Brahman is the Upadana Karana of Akasha, Atman Akasha, therefore Akasha is not separate from Brahman. But Vayu is created from Akasha. So Vayu is independent of Brahman. So how do you know everything by knowing Brahman? So that's a Vayu Akasha Kaya Tvena. Since Vayu is the Akasha Karim, effect of Akasha. Brahmani, Anantara Bhavat, therefore it is not included in Brahman. Brahma Jnana, Vayu Jnana, therefore by knowing Brahman, you do not know why, because Vayu is created as a different cause. Only by knowing material cause, there is no the effect. But then, for Vayu, the material cause is Akasha, not Brahman. 
therefore by knowing Brahman, how do you know why? So that pratijna, eka vijnana, sarva vijnana will not be satisfied. It is not sinkaniyam, that doubt should not be raised, that doubt should not occur. Puru puru kare vishasasya brahmana uttarottara kare hetu tvasya vakshimanataya. Puru puru kare vishasasya brahmana. So ultimately, this Brahman, which is qualified by the Purva Karya. So, Atman Akasa Sambhuta hai, from Atma, Akasa is born, that means Atma or Brahman alone manifests Akasa. Akasa Dvayuhu. So, that means that Brahman, which is manifested as Akasa, that gave rise to Vayu. Puru Purya Karya Vishishta Se Brahmana. So, Brahman is qualified by Akasa, Brahman is qualified by Vayu. Uttarottara Kari Hetutvasya. So, Brahman alone in that particular state gives rise to the next effect. Vakshmanatya. So, this is what will be stated. Vyad Rupatvat. Brahman, Annas, Vyad Rupatvat, Nasya Brahman, Vayu. No, Vyadrupa Apanasya Brahman Hayva Vayu Karanatva. Vyadrupa Apanasya Brahman. So Brahman which is attained, the state of Vyad or the space, from that Brahman alone, Vayu is born. Tasmat Vayu Jayat. Therefore, Vayu is born. And not it is birthless or immortal. Itena Madhariswa Vyakhyata. So by this sutra, by all the reasoning presented to show how Akasha is born, all those reasons also apply for the creation of Vayu. So now go to Bhashya. Ati Deshoyam. This is the extension of application, atidesha. So what applies in one place also applies elsewhere. So for example, I remember many years having read an article that crows in, in Japan also crows are black. You know? In India then crows are black, so wherever crows are they must be black, in Japan also they must be black. Or just as Upanishad says, Yasa Atra, what is it? Karmana, karma, karmana chito loka hai, anitya hai, eva meva, amutra punni chito loka hai. So just as what is, what is uh, acquired through karma here is impermanent, so also in svarga, what is acquired through punya karma also is impermanent. So the extending the logic, whatever logic applies to us also applies to heaven. So if the, the gravity is such and such here, gravity also is same thing in the United States. <coughs> and if people are miserable here, this is miserable there also. In India, people are, in America, people are comfortably miserable. In, in India, they are uncomfortably miserable. But then by, by logic, you can say that the misery must be there. Comfort or lack of it does not change the inner state of the person. <coughs> Because for being miserable you don't need anybody, you need yourself, that's all. That for being miserable you don't need anybody else. If you needed somebody else then that, that can be changed. That that is not there in India and that is there in the US and so forth. So Indians like to claim that we are happy people, Americans are not happy. So that we like to say that. But then wherever human mind is there is misery. And human mind is capable of creating misery for itself, it will find out reasons. Even though poverty is not in the United States and poverty is in India, so if you think that poverty is the cause of misery, which it may very well be. But even if poverty is not there, abundance is there. That also can become cause of misery. Abundance or affluence also can create misery in different sense. And so extension of logic. Ati Deshoyam, this is an extension of logic of the previous Ajikarana, previous topic. <coughs> Therefore, Ratnava says, 
अति देशात अति देशत्वात न पृथक संगत्यादि अपेक्षा बिकॉज दिस सूत्र ऑल्सो और दिस अधिकरण ऑल्सो इज इन द सेम लाइन दस प्रीवियस अधिकरण दे पर वट एवर संगति और कनेक्शन और रिलेशनशिप अप्लाई टू प्रीवियस अधिकरण ऑल्सो अप्लाई हियर सो यू नीड नॉट सेपरेटली स्टे दी संगति दी दी कनेक्शन हियर व्याख्यान पर व्याख्यान और डिस्कशन और व्यर्थ ऑफ द स्पेस मातरिश्वा भी मातरिश्वा मीन्स व्हाट व्यर्थ आश्रय वायु वायु विच एज इट्स आश्रय इट्स लोकेशन और बेसिस ऑन स्पेस देर इज ऑल्सो व्याख्या देर इज ऑल एक्सप्लेन व्युत्पत्तिकसनातन तेज आदि अतिक्रम्य वायो उत्पत्ति मत्वन व्याख्यान कारण आत्पत्ति कथनातन सो प्रीवियस अधिकरण टॉक्ट अबाउट व्युत्पत्ति डिस्कस दि क्रिएशन ऑफ स्पेस तेज आदि अतिक्रम्य नौ देन यू शुड टॉक अबाउट तेज तत्ज असृजत अतिक्रम्य वायो उत्पत्ति मत्वन व्याख्यान सो वाय डू यू नाउ टेक अ वायु आफ्टर द स्पेस सो वॉट्स रीजन वाय द डिस्कशन ऑफ वायु इज टेकन आफ्टर आकाश वाई नॉट फायर वाई नॉट वाटर वाय वायु सो वाच वियत आश्रय है बिकॉज वायु इज इमीडिएट प्रोडक्ट आफ्टर वियत इन दर वायु फॉलो डिस्कशन ऑफ वायु follows the discussion of space se ratna va tat teja hai asri jada ke shrute hai aakasha vayu shrutya virodha hai asti na vayati so tat teja asri jada That Brahman created Tej hai or fire. Whereas the idea is Akasha Dwayu from the space, the air is created. This is what the Virudha Asti Navayati. Are these two Shrutis do they contradict each other or not? It is Ek Vakyatva Bhav Abhav Abhyam Samshay. Whether These two statements, Akasha Dwayu, the Dwayu screen from space, the Teja Srijata, it created fire. Whether they convey there is a unity of purport or not. So, ek Vakyatva Bhav Abhav Abhya, ek Vakyatva Bhav, whether there is unity of purport, Abhava or not. This is Samshaya. So, that's the basis of Samshaya or the doubt. Gauna, Paksha, पूर्व पक्ष सिद्धांत पक्षा अति दिशति सो रिमेम्बर दी सीक्वेंस ऑफ डिस्कशन प्रीवियस अधिकरण फर्स्ट अति देशी के देन पूर्व पक्ष के देन सिद्धांत के सो गौण पक्ष इज वॉट दी एक देशी ना एक देशी सो दूलो वेदांत इज गौण पक्ष देन पूर्व पक्ष दी अपोन सिद्धांत दी सिद्धांत Vedant. So this was the sequence of presentation that was followed in the previous Adhikarana. In all the Adhikaranas, the same sequence is followed. This is what we were told earlier. So therefore, Bhastakar also, it is some say, whether the two Sudhis contradict each other or they say the same thing. 
Taitriya says, from Akasha, Vayu was created. Chanduga says, Brahman created Tejana or fire. So, are these Shrutis in contradiction or not? <coughs> Some say, Kauna Paksha, Pura Paksha, Siddhanta Paksha, Atidasati. Those Paksha, meaning what? Those viewpoints. Those different viewpoints also apply here. So there is an extension of those viewpoints as well. <coughs> so Tatra Mahasaka says, Tatra Bhi Ede Yatha Yogam Bakshaha Rasaita Vyaha So I am Ati Deshaha. So this is an important thing. Bhāsakara says, this is merely an extension of discussion of the previous topic. And therefore, the same line of arguments will also follow here. <coughs> so, tatrāpi ete yatha yogam pakshaha rasaita. The Hari also is opposing viewpoints also must be presented in a manner similar to the previous topic. <coughs> Sutra Navyat Ashrahe. The Ekadeshi said that via the space is not clear Ashrahe because there is no Shruti which delineates the creation of space. It's also Navayu Utpadyate Chandogana Utpati Prakare Anam Nadi. So here the Ekadeshi says that Vayu also is not created. Why did he say that? To show the Ekavakya. So Ekadeshi, in his own way, wants to show the consistency of the Shrutis. And so says that even though Taitriya says Akashad Vayu, there is only Gauni Shruti. So Gauni Asambhavad. That comes later. First he says, so Na Vayu Ashrute. <coughs> so Na Vayu Utpadyate. Vayu is not born, is not created. Chandogya, Chandoga, Chandoga, Nam, Utpati Prakane, Anangnat. Because in the, in the context of discussion of the creation, the Chandogas, the follower of the Chandogya, they do not in fact mention the creation of Vayu. Therefore, Vayu is not created. It is Ekaha Paksha. This is the Ekadeshi Paksha. Then further. Then what was the next sutra? Astitu. There was the next sutra there, here also. Astitu Taitriyana Putpati Prakarne Amdanam Akashadvayu Iti Pakshantaram. But the Puru Paksha is Astitu. Who says there is no Shruti talking about the creation of Vayu? There is Shruti. Taitriyanam utpatti prakare amnanam. So, in the context of creation, in the Taitri Upanishad, there is amnanam. It is a very clear statement. Akasha Vayu. From Akasha, Vayu is created. So, clear statement is there. How do you say that there is no Shruti talking about the creation of Vayu? Puru Pakshi. So says that you are not right, that why is not created, why is created. And therefore, there is a contradiction between Chandogya and Taitriya. Therefore, Upanishad is not Pramana. So this is Pura Paksha. (coughs) 
क्रमश्रुति so if you say that the tejas is created from akasha then they will contradict the statement vayo ho so akasha vayo vayo agni idi krama shruti badat paura pari tejas prasam bhanga if then vayo is first before tejas then chandu gets as tejas is first then the tejas cannot be first if vayo is before tejas उत्पत्तिश्रुति वायु इज गौण असंवाद बिकॉज there are no causes available for creation of vayu just as the state is no causes available for creation of space singing applies there no causes available for creation of vayu idi apuro abhipraya so asambhava how is it impossible says असंभवाई समवाय निमित्त कारण आर नॉट देयर फॉर क्रिएशन ऑफ स्पेस देवर असंभव बट हियर असंभव आर इम्पॉसिबिलिटी इज प्रेजेंट इन अ डिफरेंट वे असंभवस्य सायेशा अनस्थमिता देवता यद वायु इज वायु देवता इज अनस्थमिता इट नेवर सफर्स फ्रॉम एक्सटिंक्शन इज ऑलवेज देयर इट इज अस्तमय प्रतिषेधात सो बाय डिनाइंग दिस सेटिंग अस्तमय इन केस ऑफ वायु अमृतवादी श्रवण सेम स्टेटमेंट यू नो दी हाँ वायु अंतरिक्ष अमृत सो वायु अमृत इमोटल सो वाय दिस वायु इज इंपॉसिबल टू क्रिएट वायु इन जीविंग अदर श्रुति असंभव प्रतिज्ञा अनुपरोधा सिद्धांत सिद्धांत प्रेजेंटेड इन टू सूत्र प्रतिज्ञा अहानि अव्यतिरेका शब्देभ्य प्रतिज्ञा अनुपरोधा प्रतिज्ञा अहानि दि प्रतिज्ञा विल नॉट बी अफेक्टेड सो इन कीपिंग विद प्रतिज्ञा व्हाट्स द प्रतिज्ञा एक विज्ञानेन सर्व विज्ञानम एवरीथिंग इज नोन बाय नॉलेज ऑफ वन सो प्रतिज्ञा अनुपरोधेन अनुपरोधात 
by an obstruction of that pratigna. Yavad vikaram to vibhas, so that is one thing. Secondly, yavad vikaram vibhaga. So wherever vikara is there, vibhaga is there. So wherever vibhaga is there, vikara also is there. So vibhaga, abhyoga mahat, utpadyate vayu to siddhanta. Siddhanta is vayu, utpadyate vayu is created, is siddhanta. So this way, same sequence is followed. Dekadeshi, Pura Paksha. Ekadeshi and Siddhanta. So this is the sequence was there. Same sequence is understood here. But Bhashyakara, so Vyakhyada, Sutrakara leaves an exercise to us. So Bhashyakara does that exercise for us, you know. Vyakhyada. We'll continue. Next one. Oh.